Hello, this evening's greetings. Hope you've had a lovely time over the festive period. And now we're building up to the full moon on the 30th in Cancer at eight degrees. And we're also winding down 2020 and getting ready for 2021 we're using the Gregorian calendar. So today is Monday the 28th of December 2020 and the sun is in Capricorn so we're in that patriarchal energy, Christ energy, grounded, practical energy, father energy, masculine. The moon is waxing in Gemini today, and at the moment it's 19 degrees. So I'm just going to read you that story. Strange creatures peeking out from behind trees. Surprises, destiny shocks, stunning events present a way to evolve rapidly for the daring and the wild. Whatever you assume and prepare for, the moment shall be different. Nothing is meant to be straightforward here. You must be kept on the alert, prompted, beguiled, tricked, anything to help you leap off. The biggest trick is to identify consciously with an innocent, youthful, almost hopelessly ingenuous persona and then to magnetize a destiny that would never come to such a basic kind of person. This way the edge, the tension, the joke is perfectly poised to stretch just far enough to trip you up every time. The greater self finds its ways to get at a little self who wants to hide in safe places when instead a much larger destiny is in the works which insists upon knocking at your door, preferably a back door or a side door to jump right in, scare the living daylights out of you and wake you up for the next scintillating adventure along a vast and unlimited spectrum. Mm. Well, certainly that on the world stage, isn't it, right now? So lots happening out there. Gathering speed on this continuum inventing lots of new hiccups along the way where people feel they've settled into some sort of safety and then suddenly another thing is looming up. So again, if we look at that in that perspective, that is a whole different mindset. And that is the real key right now with this new energy coming in. Today we start the second 13-day cycle. Have my calendar here. There we go. We're on White Wizard. So we're in the Red Castle. We began the journey here on the 15th of December in Sagittarius. And we're now going on to the next stage of Ikshal, white wizard, all about empowerment, letting the magic flow through us, the asteroid belt, and very, very magical. We've got lots coming up in this wave spell because we'll reach our first 20 day cycle with yellow resonance sun, which is a clear sign. And so that in itself is super powerful. Lots of amazing astrology coming up as well. More so in the second half of January. And I've just been mapping codes for people over the past couple of days. I am in a whole amazing new space of working with the 52 day cycle with our own 52 day personal code. So doing that for clients, doing that for myself, doing that for the family, 
and it is literally mind blowing. It's just wow. So for me today, with my personal code, I am 31, back in 1996, and this whole 13 day spiral, that's the energy that I'm gonna be working with at that time, working through from 1996. And so each one of my clients and family has a different spiral, has a different number, and so again, this is for people who are really working on a deep level now with their own personal story, which is so crucial at this time because we wanna be looking at how we have come to be of this mindset, how our family has come to be in this creation story and how we've reached this point in time and space and where we go from here. So how we keep the really great stuff, how we keep our gifts, our passion, our star seed energy of what we've come to really expand and share and evolve a new way of being for human beings through doing that on our own personal trip and the people that we are now connecting to. And how we do that is by letting go of the holograph beliefs of fear that are very, very old story that don't have a place here now, but we're still running them. And I watched a fantastic documentary last night about a psychiatrist who brought in new learning for people who'd committed horrendous crimes by studying their biology, so by doing brain scans, by studying their personal history, so their childhood abuse and how they were literally living post-traumatic stress disorder every day and how they went on to do horrendous things based on this distorted biology and psychology. And this is so fascinating because if you look at what's happening now on the planet, the people who have positions of power, how do we know who they are? How do we know who anyone is? Um, how do we know that they are really well-rounded people who we can trust? This is what's being shown to us now, isn't it? So that we can start to understand how many people who are in power are not psychologically sound at all. In fact, they're very ill people and yet they are shaping how the majority of human beings live on planet Earth from this place of skewed perception and skewed values around what is important and power being out of balance. And so again, it's just seeing a much broader perspective now and what human beings really can become aware of, can learn. Because a lot of the stuff that we are experiencing now comes from unconscious choices, comes from a lack of awareness, a lack of, well, even naivety, ignorance. Certainly from my perspective, most of my life in the early days was very unconscious and a lot of my behaviors were very stupid <laughs> and um, did a lot of damage to myself on every level with the behaviors that I did and still working through that now you know with things that I really like to eat for example over the festive period that I know are not good for me and and so on and so on and so on so lots of of learning over the first 13 days and the first 13 day code is bringing us that awareness of 
what are our survival issues? What are our behaviors, our coping mechanisms that have allowed us to make it thus far on planet Earth? That may not be in our best interest, you know, that may have meant that we've had to hide our true light in some way, that we've had to kowtow, that we've had to do the emperor's new clothes thing, you know, pretend, uh, be manipulative, lie, all of that sort of stuff, because we felt that we had to in order to keep a relationship, a job, a lifestyle, it's all of that stuff that's really coming up now. So as we begin this 13 day process, on whatever level of consciousness we have, it's again, using this matrix, which is so mind blowing, which is so amazing. So for me personally, I know each day, I don't know exactly, you know, cause, but it's all in there, it's all in there. Everything that I've ever done is in there, it's stored, it's logged. So the more that we become consciously aware of what each day represents for us in terms of the matrix, then we can focus on bringing it to light for ourselves, bringing it to our own conscious awareness of, you know, things that have happened to me personally and the theme will be coming around again because it's remembering that my belief around this anyway uh, and this what we're here for at this time is we're in this giant mystery school we're here people who are watching this video who want to become consciously aware who want to create new ways for human beings by doing it themselves by healing themselves uh, we're here at this time to embody new codes, to bring in new ways of being. And that means we have to become very aware of what created old ways of being. So again, going back to this documentary that I watched, uh, many of the people at that time, as always happens with new conscious awareness, is the person who's bringing it in gets ridiculed and a lot of people are in denial. They don't want to look at what that person is saying. So they, they're not interested in looking at all these different variables, for example, of, of what makes a human being want to do something pathological to another human being. It's scary stuff, isn't it? You know. And once you start going down that route and you start thinking about it, it can bring up lots of fear. So again for a lot of people they don't have any tools to deal with their fear so they you know they get drunk or they get take drugs or they avoid it um, they can't deal with it but it's so essential now to learn about how to bring ourselves into a place of peace personally loads and loads of things out there but most importantly how to work with the emotional mind how to work with this old story so we understand this information so we can do something about it this is what the Aquarius energy that's coming in so we can do something about it for all of us because we all affect each other on the planet you know that we're all in this together and that can be really scary when you've got psychotic people who are doing behaviors that are harmful and how do you stop them? You know, this has been the enigma, hasn't it, for thousands of years. So going into this though on a deeper level and using these tools and using this esoteric awareness and all the new awareness around energy modality, you know, these things have been around for thousands of years on the planet. And in the West, they are quite new and so again with, with a lot of energy psychology people don't trust it or they don't know enough about it or they don't want to look at their own personal stuff their own personal story because it hurts a lot of the time my understanding is we've got to go there and go into the hurt and heal it because the more that we do stuff to avoid that 
the story keeps coming around and it gets louder and louder and it's very loud now on the planet it's very very loud around self-empowerment issues so my way of learning about this has been with a mind calendar on the one hand for 10 years experientially every day working through my own process and, and the magic that it's brought for me working with other people but also psychology and learning more and more about that new stuff all the time and just starting a degree on forensic psychology so again the pathology wanting to understand what creates the pathology because we want to stop doing that don't we we want to stop having situations for human beings that create pathology now in our society this is not being addressed at all and people are all putting their money into the general pot in society that's supposed to be for the benefit of society but it's not really addressing that at the moment at all and the situation that we're in it's the opposite of that it's really creating more and more trauma for people more and more stress and the people who are in charge of doing the things that affects all of us don't seem to be aware of that on one level or are aware of that and are still doing it anyway or are aware of that and are doing that with conscious intent so you know whatever your beliefs are about that there is a lot of stuff happening at the moment that is affecting all of us and the place to start is with me peace begins with me so my passion is about sharing tools sharing magical things that i've learned over 25 years now really in terms of psychology and 10 years in terms of the mayan 13 years in terms of eft and giving people information to help them understand themselves because the only person that we can empower is ourselves truly otherwise if we're trying to do it for other people it isn't really empowering for them we can show tools we can show methodology and each person can learn how to do that themselves that's the most important thing emotional freedom technique really does do that and that's why I love sharing it. So if you haven't checked it out yet, please do check it out because it will change your life if you do it. And it will change everybody's lives. This is the magic of it all. So, goddess card today, Artemis, wholeness. As you personify the many aspects of womanhood, be with me in my many roles in the home, in vocation, in relationships with others. So today we're setting out on a 13 day journey to refine what's gone on the 13 days before. And so anything that's happened to us in the past 13 days where we felt disempowered, for example, where we felt unable to do something somebody else is pushing uh, a framework upon us mm, yes there's quite a few of those going on at the moment how that makes us feel and how to heal it most importantly and so my understanding is these stories keep coming around and around and around for us until we really understand them until we heal them and until we start to do new behaviors and also remembering that even though it's a very challenging time right now it's all part of the cosmic plan because we have to understand that most of the people who are in key positions of power are not the the most responsible people to be in that position are not the wisest people 
and we really have to look at ourselves as to each individual coming up with new ideas, new solutions for our society based on what isn't working in our society today. That's the flip point. And trusting that as I do my own personal healing and change and come up with ideas and things that work and share them in whatever way, then that is how we will evolve and change. So we have to go through this process to do that. So we've got Yellow Warrior and that is going to be the alchemy day. So coming up the day after tomorrow. So that's going to be on the full moon in Cancer on the 30th. That's going to be a significant day how to be the warrior of the heart who activates the heart healing. That is the key and that is where the spirit is. In shamanic terms, in using Carlos Castaneda, for example, so reading his books, The Fire Within is, is a really good one. And this is understanding the petty tyrant. So this is a person who has power over us in some way, may have power over our life, over our job, over how we move around the world, how that makes us feel. And these are our greatest teachers. This is our greatest discipline. So again, it's understanding how did this come into being? How is this possible? How do we get ourselves into this situation? And often it's because we haven't made conscious choices. We weren't aware, we were unaware, but we're aware now of the price to, that is to be paid for making unconscious choices, not thinking things through, often being naive, believing that other people have a loving, respectful mindset when they don't and being unable to see how dark that mindset is because we don't have that dark mindset in the same way. So we can't possibly see how that is going to work out. We couldn't even think of it because it's not in our mindset to do it. But this brings challenges to us and this is how we become empowered. This is how we start to say no more. This is how we start to say, why is this happening? How can we stop this from happening again? And we see this repeating pattern over and over in our history. And sadly, we have to keep going there until we start to create something new. So the heart is the key, healing the heart. This changes everything, this changes the energy. And coming into balance with our masculine and feminine within. So not being a passive person, becoming powerful from within, from healing all our disempowerment times in the past and changing our behavior. So the card we thought today is the nine of wands. And this is such a powerful card because this is strength. So again, it's, it's all about, I'll put a link on as I always do. I'm just gonna read you from Eli. So as you can see, the sun's at the top there. And this card is, the moon is in Sagittarius. And so we go back to the new moon in Sagittarius, which was a solar eclipse as well. And it was the day before. So it was on the very last day of the spiral, which was, I did a video about that 
yellow cosmic sun. So if you think back to that time just before this new spiral, what came to light for you then? Change is stability is the message of this card. So it's just keep going with the flow. So again, what White Wizard is all about is about going with the flow, letting the magic flow through us. And this is the world of pure spirit. So sometimes we can feel driven to do things like The Sorcerer's Apprentice, that film where he gets the magic and suddenly is off and doing all these things and he can't stop. And so sometimes we get a mission to do and we can't stop. And sometimes that makes us ill as well. And so this card is all about great strength, power, recovery from sickness, which is what we can do if we really start to work with the previous 13 days and say, how can I refine that? What can I do differently? You know, this is really about being conscious about our behavior and our thoughts and what our mindset is. And so we will be arriving at a peak experience in nine days, nine weeks or nine months. So again, see that in whatever way you wish. In nine days, we will be in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll be in white solar wind which is a portal day and that's a really key day for me that's a burner year for me um so yeah that's going to be a real powerful time the day before that is red galactic dragon huge energies on that day in terms of the astrology so i'm just going to read you a little bit about what's coming up okay so again back to this one so on day three so on the 30th we've got the full moon in cancer at eight degrees so i'm just going to read you about that So this is sort of the culmination of the summer solstice. An alchemical text written on parchment. The code that brings everything together is here remembered and insisted upon. You cannot shake off the authoritative understanding of the higher aspect and its core. You are riveted to the spot inwardly by the story, the myth, the legend. For you believe in the chronicle, the birthright of realisation, penetration, and return upon the spiral. This way of being also calls at wild events and experiences in order both to challenge and to rally your understanding into renewing itself by encompassing what is anything but already cosmically clear. And as you discover how to enjoy and partake in the chaos below and to commune within and heighten the dedication above, the path of always having known these things before will reawaken in a whole other sense and become life-giving, life-renewing and richly permeating and true. Lovely, isn't it? Okay, so on New Year's Eve, we have Red Self-Existing Earth. That's the same code that was on 11 11 in 2018 so whatever you were doing back then very powerful day um, i was in mexico so that's key for me so again the more that you know what you were doing and when it's essential for the conscious dreamer to start mapping this the new year is white overtone mirror and so this was a five-year cycle sorry year five of a 13 year cycle that began in 2017. So whenever we're on a year five overtone or a day five, we are in mastery mode. So whatever holograph you were experiencing, whatever you're experiencing on planet earth in 2017, how has it changed now? What, are you, what themes are still there? that aren't aligning with truth. Well, um, 
just a few out on the world stage, aren't there? Just a few there. Um, but remember, reflecting that back to ourselves, what's our personal story around that? Why is this still coming up? And okay, so then we've got the next day is the 3rd of January, as I mentioned before, is yellow resonance sun. So that's a clear sign day on Pakal Votan's tomb. So it's one of 13 clear signs, so really key for a process. By the time we've done this first 20 day cycle, we are going to be resonating with what's light and what's our shadow story. It's a portal day. And so that's going to be a very key day, the 3rd of January, Sunday. We have the 4th of January, huge day astrologically. So start of a new 20 day cycle and we've got Mercury conjunct Pluto, both in Capricorn. So we've also got Sun conjunct Pluto and Mercury square Eris. Eris is our discontented fairy experience. So where we've been really feeling disempowered and teed off in the past. Sun conjunct Pluto is showing our light and our darkness again. And we're going back on that day to Red Dragon 13 day cycle. So what's seeking integration. And so we're gonna be seeing a lot of patriarchal story coming through, shadow story coming through and how we can be in our center. So prepare yourself for that day because that's gonna be a biggie. Then we have got white solar wind, which I've already mentioned. So every day nine is a gateway to a higher octave. And so again, if we're doing this in a work, if we're doing this in a process, this healing process, this is a key, it's not intellectual of itself. This is about healing. This is about feeling the feelings. This is about releasing the emotion. This is about letting it go. Then on the 6th of January, we've got blue planetary night which is the manifestation of our conscious dream. So straight away, we're gonna be going into seeing where we are in terms of what have we consciously created? Where are we at? How do we want to work with this energy? And on that day, Mars goes into Taurus. So we're coming into a very different energy now. Mars has been in Aries for the longest time, for months and months and months, right back to, I think it's the, spring equinox so right back to when the other spiral started and now we're going to be going bringing that energy down of new beginnings into manifestation so a very different energy indeed venus is also conjunct the galactic center on that day so we've got new potentiality for our venusian values and um, blue nights um, experience is all about changing and maturation, transformation. So really key for our Venusian maturation process. And the next energy then is taking us to the end of the spiral white cosmic world bridger. So really this whole process is about seeing what is seeking to shift from our old worldview to the new worldview. So that's on the 9th of January, we complete the spiral. And then the energy just really amps up in the second week of January, which I will be doing another video about that. So it's time to really get into a good space, prepare ourselves, do the inner work. This energy is expanding all the time around empowerment issues. And so of course we're going to be challenged and 
we are here to really come into our Aquarian energy now, wherever that is in your chart, is really key for you. The more that you know about your cosmic codes, the more empowering it can be because you become aware of what's going on in starry skies, what's going on on each day, what the universal energy is and what your energy is. That's so key. You become aware of what you're replaying, what your movie is all about and as and when you feel ready to because it's all on a timeline, it's all coded. And the key, healing. I know so many people who know so much about astrology and the Mayan calendar and they aren't doing any healing. And so the story cannot change, in my opinion, if we do not heal. This is the time of the emotional evolution. It's a time of understanding that our emotional mind is key to our holograph, the way that we live, understanding what we've come here to heal in our personal ancestral storyline and to really focus with discipline which is what Capricorn is all about, be disciplined, do the work, know ourselves and be true to ourselves at this time, to have faith in ourselves, to trust ourselves. And so all of those life experiences where we haven't done that, where we haven't experienced that, they will reappear so that we can revisit them, heal them, and do something different. So I wish you an amazing 13 day process. If you want to know more about your cosmic codes, please do get in touch with me. I have a contact form on my website, which is flowwithjoe.com. I trust you will have the time that you're meant to have and that you can be an empowered, beautiful being and share your truth and your light at this time. Remember, it's what we came here for and we're fully capable of doing it. We've had so many lifetimes doing this work. Lots of love. Bye for now.